back again with a video I'm gonna talk about with regard to hiring people. I know I mentioned this on quite a few videos. I did one recently, maybe, I don't know, a month and a half ago. I think the video that I did on that was called uh, Shower Mistakes Caught Early or something like that to that effect. Uh, the reason that I do these, I get a lot of flack from other people. I don't know that they're Tylers necessarily, but I catch a lot of flack from them saying, you know, why are you so hard on these people and how come you critique so much and how come you're so negative? Can't you be positive? No, I can't be positive. That's not my purpose. There's other people on YouTube that have that positivity you're looking for. My video started out 10 years ago now, um, talking about bad bathroom jobs, how people have spent money time over time, two or three contractors, two or three months going forward, and in the end they have a non-functional shower. So I just feel like it's my job or my calling or my little niche market to make sure that um, when you're having a job done, whether you're doing it yourself as a DIYer or contractors come in, that you know all these little things to look for. So that's my audience. My audience generally aren't other tile guys or other contractors or whatever, although sometimes they have been. Mostly it's DIYers and or people who have just simply hired a contractor and have gotten into a bad situation. So they look up bad tile jobs or things to look for on YouTube or on Google and they find me and they, they get a heads up and that's the whole purpose and that's the reason I'm doing the videos that I do and the reason I'm here doing this video now. So hopefully this helps somebody. I know it's helped other people as I mentioned that other video. I will post it, I think right up there is where the cards are gonna go. So I'm gonna post that video um, of what I'm talking about here. That Those people, those homeowners, actually found out early, I think day one or day two, that's another problem, which I'll get to. Um, I think one or two days in, those contractors started messing things up and they stopped the job, which is a whole purpose, yay, of my videos is to make sure that they didn't go forward with the job 50% or 80% or 100% done with a non-functional shower. And that's specifically why I like to post these videos because every prep job is done a little differently and when they're done horribly is when I want to come on camera. So. Without further ado, I came in here to do an estimate on this job and it was already prepped. There was, I think, three different contractors that came in here. I believe it was a plumber, it was a sheetrock guy, which he's done an outstanding job of the sheetrock. Everything's nice and smooth and tapered and, you know, I don't have a problem with the sheetrock. I think there was a third contractor at some point, I forget who it was. Um, but anyway, the point being is that when, when they started prepping this job, the tile guy was privy to this job to start with. And when I first walked in here, there's a lot of stuff that's done wrong already. Without one tile being lifted, without one bag of mortar being mixed, without anything done, there's problems. And usually those problems rear their ugly head. And if you're a tile guy, you already noticed, <laughs> you already noticed some of the problems going on anyway. Usually, and this is fantastic, this gives me a bird's eye view, so to speak, of what this tile guy proposed that he was going to do because he bought some of the material already. So when I first came in here, one of the thing, one of the heads up to me right off the bat was one bag of mortar, one bag of thin set rather. How is it that you're going to do three walls and a shower, a floor, and the outside floor with one bag of mortar? It made no sense. It's like, why is there only one bag of mortar? You know, the homeowner didn't know, but it was kind of a rhetorical question. Then the other thing that I found interesting is that he bought 16th inch spacers. Now I carry a whole bunch of different types of 16th inch spacers. I don't use them a lot because I'm not using 16th lines very often. But I carry them and I reuse them over and over and over again until I just can't use them anymore. It bothers me if a tile guy, so-called tile guy, buys a bag of spacers. Because to me that tells me that he doesn't have any, and why he wouldn't have any, I don't know. Um, another thing, this is ugh, three gallons, three and a half gallons of tile adhesive. Now, because I know tile adhesive as far as like um, mastic, it doesn't say mastic, it would say mastic if it was. Mastic is the last thing you would ever use in a shower. In fact, mastic is the last thing you would ever use on a large format tile, period. Mastic has no purpose in a shower whatsoever, and that's all he's doing is a shower. So because it's tile adhesive rather than mastic, it could very well for wall and floor tile. 
It could very well be, because it says for wall and floor tile, that it could in fact be thin set. But it's pre-mixed thin set, and I can tell you without, with, with knowing what I'm talking about, because I've gone on jobs where I've had to take tile off of a wall that was used with the pre-mixed mortar, uh, sorry, pre-mixed thin set, this is as bad as mastic is. Maybe a tad bit better, but it's still not going to dry. So this is a big no-no. If you see a big three and a half gallon of this at Home Depot or wherever you get your material, pass it by and get this. Don't get that. So that's another big problem that, you know, like right off the bat, what he bought in material is quite not enough to finish the job, but it's telling me a lot of what I need to know. I know that he's in a red guard. You know, obviously you got a gallon and a half of red guard because this one's been open already. He has some mesh tape. Some, some nice mesh tape that he's going to go around all the corners and make sure that he has a three inch overlap because that's six inch tape. So he's gonna have that three inch overlap that I think is redundant. Um, again, tape, same as on drywall that tape is used is because it's a crack preventer. What does it say on Red Guard here? It's a waterproofing and crack prevention membrane, exactly what it is. It's a rubber membrane that is far surpasses any type of tape that we'd ever use. So I'm not suggesting that you not use it. People use it all the time, but it is redundant. So if you're using tape and red guard, then I, I don't know. You just have extra time and money to spend. Um, this alone would work. In fact, this has been here for a while. And you can see, although this is pretty thick, I've got one hand, but I'm gonna stretch it. And I'm gonna stretch this further. <laughs> Look how much of this is stretching. I can stretch this way, 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 way further than I ever could any tape out there. Right now I'm at about eight inches and I started out at about four and then finally it broke. There's no way I could... <laughs> God, I have to explain things so deeply. There's no way I could stretch this tape any more than maybe an eighth of an inch, possibly. And this was literally inches. So, scientifically speaking, this is your tape. Like this is your crack preventer, as tape is normally a crack preventer on sheetrock and every other material. So that's kind of sort of how I know what's going on, how, how I know that he's done this work before. He's got pan liner here, but I've never measured out the pan liner to see if it's actually going to fit over everything and fit up the walls and do all the stuff it's supposed to do. He's got four bags of bedding mortar, which is okay, I don't have a problem with that but four bags is overkill on this job. Three bags, in fact, two would probably do it because these are larger bags than what I normally buy. I think two would do it, maybe two and a half. So I'm not hating that he bought more than he needed. Better to have more than not enough, but you know, there is that. Uh, what else, what else? I think that's about it as far as the material that I've seen. He's got three sheets of Durarock, which is cool. He's got quarter inch Durarock which is okay, because I know he plans on using that on the floor. But he's not quite ready for the floor yet, because as I already kind of alluded to, this crease here <laughs> is squeaking almost everywhere along here. And that squeaking is just wood rubbing up against wood, because things aren't anchored properly. One side of the wood is anchored and one isn't, or vice versa, or both together. Either which way, there's movement, and there should never be movement in a subfloor. And, and so him putting the Durarock on here would not eliminate um, the need for a solid structure floor. Um, so that's a little bit problematic, but it's probably jumping the gun a little bit. So then jumping the gun a little bit before <laughs> the backer board ever goes up the wall, the curb should have been put in. So the line was drawn for the curb, but he used pressure treated, or he proposed that he was gonna use pressure treated wood, which to me is a big no-no. First of all, the line shouldn't be exactly on the end. You need a little room for backer and tile, so that line should have been drawn about three quarters of an inch off of the side of the wall. Either which way, it was never put down, which is a good thing. Let me get back over here to show you why. Pressure treated wood has a chemical that's impregnated into it. And when that chemical dries, and if you go out to a fence that you have in your backyard that's been there longer than about five years, you'll know what I'm talking about. When that chemical dries, all this warping happens, and sometimes warping and twisting simultaneously, as this one I started to do. So it's not only warped, but you can see about halfway it started twisting. This one's even worse. 
So, not only in this one too, I mean they're all bad. That one's worse of all of them. And it's just, a, it's, it, there's, no, there's no point. You're waterproofing everything on the curb anyway. So to build a curb out of potentially a dangerous material, meaning if any of these three would warp or twist, or you didn't anchor them properly, or enough anchoring, then you're running into bigger problems, especially if you have a shower door, because it's going to bust that glass on a stationary portion of this, which one side of this will be stationary. Anyway, getting back to the problems. Now we'll get the curb. The curb should have been set before the wall board is ever put on. Uh, the homeowner told me that the tile guy didn't necessarily put up the wall board. I think what happened is the sheetrock guy was here and he went ahead and I guess as a favor put up the wall board. So I'm not going to blame the tile guy necessarily for what was done, but I can guarantee there was no scabbing in here. Because I, again, I don't see any 2x6 out there. Which tells me, again, this guy hasn't built a shower. Because if he already pre-purchased all the materials, why isn't there 2x6? And the 2x6 should have been between all these studs before the wall board is ever put on. In fact, the shower pan liner should have gone up the studs before the wall board is ever put on. It should have been set. All the mortar should have been set. The pan liner should have wrapped over a pine curb, 3 high, and then the mortar put in. But before that ever happened, that drain should have been centered. <sighs> so what happened was, whew, I don't know what happened, but let me show you. If we're using this for the area where the curb would be, you can clearly see we're about four inches off from center. Not only is the drain off from center, but so is the shower valve. And so whoever did the plumbing is kind of to blame for that. I don't know, I don't know there wasn't enough oversight or whatever happened, however it happened, happened. But this was originally a bathtub, or if it wasn't a bathtub, I forget now, it was already stubbed out for a bathtub, in which case you have enough room, this is a wood floor, right? So you have enough room to pull this piece out, which to me is brand new anyway, this is all the old floor, pull this piece out and manipulate your drain down to center and transition to a two inch, which I don't know has been done. So, in other words, all of that stuff should have been done prior to the wall board put in. If that's not centered, then it should have been centered prior to the wall board. Prior to the wall board, the drain should have been centered, and then the shower pan liner. And so there's a process of all these steps that should be done. And whoever started all this prep is way, way ahead of the process to the point where it would have failed. You can't put pan liner up your backer board. It's not going to work. You can't stick tile to the pan liner that would be up your backer board, even if you could get it to stick to your backer board, which I don't know how you would do. Another big problem is most of these screw heads are showing, especially that one. God, that's horrible. This is sticking out a quarter of an inch. So most of these screw heads like that, you know, should have been countersunk, and they're not countersunk. So it just looks like they're kind of a shoddy job putting up this wall board. Um, that's, that, of it in itself, none of these things are big problems. None of these things, some of these things could be overcome. Like you have a lippage with the wall board, but then the wall board's not even uh, anchored well. Even with the one screw that's in there, it's not even in all the way. But anyway, I don't want to nitpick everything. But it, it's, the point being is that all these little things are going to end up with a bad job at the end. No matter how well the tile... If this tile guy could truly do tile, he definitely not build a shower, and that matters. Because in the end, all this stuff, all this prep, everything here matters... 80% toward a job, maybe 90% toward a job before any piece of tile is ever put in here. This is another problem. <laughs> another problem. There's a scutcheon plate that goes on here after everything is said and done. The pretty stuff, if you will. The scutcheon and the handle. There are two screws, one up here and one down here. That's about two, two and a half inches long. You need to run those screws into where the holes are at, but the holes are currently covered. Which again, right now is not a big problem, but once the tile was put on, it would be. If the guy was knowledgeable enough, he would have saved, and I don't know even if the homeowner saved it, but every shower valve comes with a mud guard. So it's just this black cover that both protects the valve and gives you your parameter for both your wallboard and your tile. And we don't know that the parameter for the wallboard and the tile has been met. You know, this valve could be too far in, in which case the plate would never fit, or vice versa. All of this stuff matters. 
no matter how good the tile guy is, all of the prep matters. Oh, speaking of which, because I meant I made a mental note. I literally just left an estimate where all the guy wants me to do is his tile work. So he has spent a lot of time and energy, and I give my props to him because he did the best he could to prep his shower. But oh my God, if he was working for me and I had him prep a shower and I came back and saw what I saw, I would fire him on the spot. The prep is horrific. And I'm not even going to the reasons why the prep is horrific, but it matters to me as a tile guy. So I have to ultimately charge him more to rectify some of these things or make these things palatable enough for me to come in and put, put tile. Because he wants the job to look outstanding. He has this faux marble 12 by 12, 24, and it's, it's going to look great when somebody does it. I don't know if I'm doing it or not, but I'd probably outprice myself on the job because I have to charge more, and he doesn't understand why all of his prep mattered so much to me. There are so many rectification issues that have to be taken care of, you know, despite the fact that he thought he did a pretty good prep job, but I have to follow that. So if you're going to... Look at that, I've got a bow on. I just noticed <laughs> if I put a straight edge. Ooh, I got a straight edge. Okay, so I'm pushing it up against that board as much as I can. Look at that gap. Oh, there we go. Look at that gap. That's an inch and a quarter gap because the small board wasn't put in correctly. So it really rocks. Anyway, as I was saying before I so rudely interrupted myself, I gotta charge this guy more now because his prep is so horribly done that I cannot follow it with my tile that I cannot mm, manipulate in such a way that it'll look good. My tile is predicated, my, how my tile looks is predicated on all the prep. And his prep is so bad that I have to rectify and correct all that stuff. And so even from the homeowner's point of view, if you're proposing to do your own prep and it's not done right, don't be surprised if you get charged more. Like, I would rather have started from scratch with his job, or this job for that matter, and knowing that I'm responsible for everything, not only under it, but above it. That my tile is pristine. Because ultimately, my customer doesn't care about any of the prep and how it was done and if it was done right or wrong. But you have to know that as a homeowner. And a DIYer especially, you have to know what you don't know. And a lot of this stuff you may or may not know, and it just matters a lot. Even to the point of the drain and centering it, making sure that you... Look here. <laughs> he bought the cheapest possible drain you could get. Like, I don't like these, these covers that have no screws on them. But that's about where the drain should be, right? Not even close. <laughs> so... <laughs> What kind of problem do we have here? We have a guy that really hasn't done showers. And that's how you know. You know because of some of the stuff that he bought. You know because of the some of the stuff that he bought. And some of the stuff that he didn't buy. And you know because of some of the prep. So fortunately in this case, no matter who ends up doing this shower, whether it's me or somebody else, hopefully that somebody else will also know this stuff and be able to take down all this wallboard, pull up this floor, Secure this floor because they're going to be responsible for any damages and all that stuff You know like like even this if I were doing the plumbing who puts the supply line for a toilet on the right side? I didn't do the cartoon finger somebody else did that, but um, I didn't do that But obviously somebody did because they knew better toilet sets right here That's where the supply should go because that's always where it hooks to the toilet little things like that matter like what plumber would do that right not only that, you're usually 12 inches off center of the drain. This is definitely not center of the drain. So eventually you've got about two or three inch discrepancy which is going to transfer to the back of that toilet tank and the toilet tank will never be up against the wall. Little things matter. Little things matter. They ultimately want me to set the toilet which means that I'm responsible for all of this stuff and that's why it matters and that's why you should be on point with making sure that you do your due diligence and part of that due diligence is knowing what you don't know. And that's why I'm trying to educate you on some of these things in a long-winded form. Because <laughs> I cannot do it in short wind at all. But um, yeah, that's all I have to say about this. And have a great day. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. 
five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post videos. And thank you very much for your support. <laughs>